All right, so I've been playing around a little bit more with React hooks, just trying to understand them a little bit better. you think I'd know them better by now, but, you know, there's always stuff that seems to uh, surprise me when I'm learning more about stuff in React. But I wanted to share something with you that I think is important to teach because you might not understand why we have this dependency right here, and I think it's good to show you an example of when emitting the dependency array can cause some issues and why we have it to begin with. So I have a situation where I have like a custom use timeout hook, which literally just creates a timeout. And then when the component were to do its cleanup function of this effect, it clears the timeout. Okay, so one thing I want to point out is if you put things in this dependency array, when things change, like for example, if I put delay here, if I were to change delay, like this came from state, um, and I change this from 2000 to 3000, this whole effect will refire. It'll, it'll clean up and then it'll reinitialize and rerun this code. And let me just show you that real quick. Now, let me just go ahead and kind of walk you through what I mean by that, because I do think this stuff is kind of important to understand. So we have a, a callback, a state variable that has a function inside of its state, and I'm calling that callback. And I'm setting a timeout, so after four seconds, it's going to invoke the callback. And that should just print out the, the string hello world. But one thing I wanted to kind of show with you is this dependency array. So I'm going to go ahead and just put like a clean up here. And I'll put initialize here. Okay. And I'm going to make a button down here that's called like, I don't know, change delay. And when you click it, I'll just say on click. And I'll just say, uh, we're going to put a state variable here. I know I'm kind of jumping around, but I'm going to go ahead and make delay come from state as well, like this. Do state. And we're going to pass delay right here. Okay, so kind of ignore this extra code here. But what I'm trying to show you here is when you click on change delay, and you change delay from 4,000 to like 2,000 or something, or 6,000, I want to show you that it does kind of clean some stuff up. So the first thing I want to point out is with React 18 strict mode, you'll see that it calls the initialize console log, and then it calls cleanup, and then it calls initialize again. So this kind of happens every time your effect is ran and cleaned up. And this is to help you find bugs potentially in your, your application because of how they plan to change React in the future with keeping state around and repopulating your components with ash state. And then also there could have some issues with um, your effect and how it's written. And they kind of do that to help you out. I don't know if it really helps. I think it makes stuff more confusing to, begin, to be honest, but that's the intent. But what I want to show you is if I change the delay, so if I click on change delay, because I have no dependency right here, nothing happens. So if I click this, nothing's going to happen, right? But it does actually change the state variable to 6,000. In fact, I could probably render that out just to kind of show that. So if I refresh the page and click change delay, you'll see that it prints out 6,000. Let me make this a button so it's a little bit uh, prettier. All right, so now what I want to do is you have this warning here that it says you are missing delay and callback in this dependency array. So if you wanted to basically reinitialize this timeout, every time delay changes, the only way to do that is if you put delay in the dependency array here. All right, so what this does is the timeout's gonna get initialized, it's gonna clean up initialize, and then finally after four seconds it calls hello world. But if I were to click change delay, it's actually going to call the cleanup function because the old effect needs to be cleaned up, and then it calls initialize with that new value of 6,000 here. So this will be 6,000 and um, it prints out hello world. Okay, so that's how you can kind of force an effect to refire when you change state variables or change some type of property that's being passed in. So I'm gonna kind of undo that example. I think that was a kind of a good overview of why we have this dependency array. Basically, you want to reinitialize things so that you have the latest value of whatever when you change properties. So now I want to show you something that kind of trips you up if you're kind of new to be React and you have ESLint to set up. This thing will continuously warn you that, hey, you're doing this wrong. And the warning is basically to let you know that, like, hey, if someone were to change the callback down here, like dynamically, 
your timeout is going to invoke old code. So let me just delete some of this stuff. I think we kind of explained how strict mode and initializes cleans up and initializes on mount. And then how when you change anything in this dependency array, it's going to clean up and then redo it. So let's clear this out real quick. And I want to show you another example that is good to kind of talk about. Um, let's just go ahead, put this back to 4,000. Get rid of that button, get rid of this. All right, so here's a different scenario where we have a component that basically creates a callback in state that says, hello world. And then we say use timeout. And after two seconds, we console log changing the callback to print GG. And then we change the callback that we have in state to then say GG. And then down here, we have another timeout that after four seconds is going to invoke the state callback. Super confusing. I know this is a really obscure example, but it just kind of helps highlight like what's going on with use effect in this dependency array a little bit. So basically, this use timeout is passed in a callback. And after four seconds, it's supposed to print it. But if you look at this code, you think that, okay, well, after two seconds, I'm changing the callback to print out GG. And then after four seconds, I'm printing that callback and it should say GG, right? But it doesn't do that. If I refresh this page, after two seconds, it says changing the callback to print GG. And then it prints out hello world. So this kind of exemplifies the issue with this dependency array because we have created a timeout and we've we're telling it to call this callback but this callback is old like the way that scoping works and how like closures work you have access you have a reference to the old function right even though we've changed it like we've we've literally changed it to say gg this timeout when we initialized it is still pointing to the old one that said hello world so the only way to force React to like fix that is you have to pass a callback here. Now, if I do that, you'll notice in the code, it just keeps on printing out, changing callback to GG over and over again. This is not the, the functionality that we're looking for, right? So like we try to make the linter happy by adding these things in, but really it just breaks our code because it's not doing what we thought it was going to do. Now, the reason this is happening is because every time this component changes the callback, the entire component re-renders. Like when this code runs, it's actually going to, in the next iteration, re-render everything, which means it's going to then call use timeout. It's going to pass it a new callback reference, which is going to get here. This is going to see that it's a new reference and it's going to rerun this entire effect over and over and over again. Right, so the, the circumvent this, what you actually need to do is this whole callback here that we're doing, this has to be in a, uh, I'll just say like callback memo, and I'll say use callback. So basically what we need to do is this, I believe. And we're gonna pass that memo. Okay, so the use callback also needs a dependency array. So now instead of passing a new arrow function every single time test component re-renders, we are caching this callback so that this thing will use the, the cache version and it won't continuously re-render this effect. So now if I refresh the page, this should work the way we intended it. But honestly, this code is just super messy. It's just, it doesn't really make sense in my opinion. And even, okay, so even this doesn't really work the way you think it was because what happens if I were to go ahead and put a console log here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just put some console logs, creating timeout, and I'll say clearing timeout. I wanna show you that it actually does a bunch of craziness. All right, so I wanna show you first off the bat, it calls set timeout twice and it clears it twice and then it calls it twice again. Now this is because we have two things in this dependency array and it's just like doing this so many times, which obviously is not kind of what you want. And then it says changing the callback to print GB, GG, which again fires off the effect um, here. All right, so e even this, like, it's just not working. This thing just like takes four seconds between the changing callback to GG and then after four seconds, it then prints out GG. So this still isn't working. Um, honestly, this is just a mess. But what you want to, 
the kind of exemplify what I'm talking about, like to fix all this this garbage that you have to do in React, the easiest thing you can pretty much do is just go ahead and make a reference up here called callback ref equals use ref. And then I'm going to say callback ref dot current is equal to callback. So basically every time this effect reruns, we are going to just overwrite the existing callback with the new one. And then every time this timeout were to be invoked, we're just going to call the callback ref current. I'm going to go ahead and pass this an anonymous arrow function I think we might need. And now the dependency array doesn't need to know about callback at all because it's just going to call this reference. And I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of this callback memo thing. I'm going to go ahead and put all this back in here. All right, so let's see if this works. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page. And after two seconds, it should print out changing callback to print GG. And then another two seconds after that, it prints out GG. And we don't have this like weird, you know, clean up and initializing of the timeout over and over again. All we have is it basically just calls the current value of the callback when this timeout fires. And that's kind of how I do it. So now that I think back of what I just explained in this video, it was super confusing and I just confused myself about all, all this stuff. But I guess the, the main takeaway from this is like, you gotta understand how this stuff works if you're gonna write production ready quality code because there's so many edge cases that you can potentially screw up with writing these effects and like having them depend on things that are changing and having them be able to use the current latest reference to, to objects. And um, it, it makes sense why we have this dependency right here, but also it doesn't make sense to even use it in a lot of situations because you don't want this timeout to keep on clearing over and over and over again and like reinitializing because that's going to mess up the resolution of your timer, right? Every time you clear the timer and create a new one, you're offsetting what your timeout is, right? So if you say like set the timeout two seconds and then halfway through that, this callback changes, it's gonna clear that timer going to make a brand new one that's another two seconds and then after three seconds total you know you just kind of skew the entire clock a little bit so with all that being said like this is a solution you can use basically use a use ref keep on updating the current value of that ref and then inside your timeouts or your intervals actually just call current as, as a function and i would just try to avoid this dependency rate as much as possible like even if the linter is warning that you need to add stuff I would probably just put it in a ref if you have to do this type of scenario with like a callback that could potentially be changing and stuff like that. Anyway, I'm pretty sure I confused you because I just confused myself. But if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up, comment, subscribe, bell icon. And then also feel free to join my Discord if you want to further talk about this a little bit. And just kind of, you know, just try to understand use effects a little bit better. Because honestly, the, the more time I spend looking into understanding use effects, the more confused I get. Anyway, have a good day. Happy coding.